stand across this sanctuary this morning and lift our hands and our voices and offer up some praise unto God. I come to bless him in this house this morning. I've come to put hell on notice that I ain't going nowhere. I've come to let heaven know that I'm standing right here and I'm standing firm. God is worthy. He is worthy. Let's give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Let's worship with them as they sing in this house this morning. Anybody come to lift up the King of Kings this morning? Come on, how many know that there's no God like our God? He's the only one true and the living God. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Servant Moses, righteousness be restored. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are a white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Servant David rebuilt in the temple of praise. And these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Somebody say, Holy There's no God that can make a way like my God can. There's no God that can heal me like my God can. Come on, somebody, give him praise in this place right now. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Shining like the sun. 
Everybody lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, has he made a way for you this morning? You got woken up with the right mind. You got woken up today. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Are you thankful that Jehovah has become your salvation? Are you thankful that you know who Jesus is in this house this morning? He's been abundantly good to each and every one of us. And I don't care what you walked in them doors carrying on your shoulders this morning. You have come to the right place. Because there's a God in this house that is able to meet the need that you are worried about right now. I don't care how dark the situation may seem. I don't care how long you've been praying for it. It's just a moment of time in God's timing. To us, it seems like an eternity sometimes. But our life is but a vapor. And the older I get, the faster time goes by, the more I realize what that scripture means. And we have a limited amount of time on this earth, so we might as well make it count. And every time you come into this house, you're making it count. So don't discount what God's doing in your life and endure the hardness like a good soldier because God's bringing you to an expected end. If you're thankful for what he's done already in your life and you're believing him for doing something greater, let's give him a hand clap of praise as they begin to worship again in song.
Do you believe he's a miracle worker in this house this morning? He does miracles great, complete. We serve the miracle worker. And I want to invite somebody. I feel like somebody in this house has a special need in their heart. Maybe they need a touch in their body. I would like to invite everyone that needs some kind of special prayer forward this morning. And if they'll sing that chorus again one more time, we're going to have all of our ministering brethren go down and pray for you if you need a special touch in this place right now. Jesus. Can we give him a hand clap of praise in this house this morning? He's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. He knows the desires of your heart, and he knows what you have need of in your life. And he's able to meet them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you can return to your seat at this time. We're getting ready to take up our Sunday morning offering. Be seated in Jesus' name. If you need an envelope, if you would lift your hands at this time, our ushers will bring one to you. 
thankful for what I feel in this house this morning. I'm thankful that I have a place that I can come to when I'm in need. And that I have a God that hears my prayers. He is so good to us. At this time, we'd like to welcome all of our guests and to our first-time guests. If you have not already filled out an information card in the foyer, you can text the word WELCOME to 919-364-5236. We have a special gift for you, and again, that is WELCOME to 919-364-5236. This time, we're going to pray over our offering. God, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to gather together in your house. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to move in this service. We thank you for what you're already doing in this place. The feeling of the unction of the Holy Ghost that is moving upon hearts and minds right now, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, in the remainder of this service to move and speak in a sovereign way. And we ask you to bless this gift this morning. Bless the gift and the giver. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. So it's that time of year again. We are having our annual graduation ceremony. This will take place tonight at 6.30 um, in the evening service. We will honor those who have graduated this year from high school, college, and Hope Corps. Please note, we will not have a seed money dinner tonight after service due to the graduation. Also, we need 10 men or young men to stay after service this morning and help Brother Brian set up the sanctuary for the graduation, and also to stay after service tonight to put everything back in its place. If I could quick, get a quick show of hands for those that are willing to stay and help with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, ten. All right, we got it. Thank you. <laughs> Liberty Cookout. Next Sunday night, July 2nd, after the evening service, we will have a delicious cookout serving grilled hamburgers and hot dogs, and all who are in attendance in the evening service are invited to join us. This is free of charge. Bring your family and friends to join us. And then Lone Soldier is reminding us about their program. This is a Christian addiction recovery program. Classes are held every Friday night at 6 p.m. in the educational building and they are open for everyone who is in need of this service. If you need any information, you can contact Brother John or Tyler Bolton, and they can get those answers to you. And at this time, and if, if everyone could stand, shake a couple people's hands, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord, and the worship team will be singing here shortly.
Somebody would put your hands together and clap unto the Lord today. Can we do that? If you've been healed in your body, can you put your hands together? If you've been delivered from sin and bondage, can you just help us praise Him a little bit on a Sunday morning? Because I can feel my help coming from the Lord. Hold it. Now, there's two kinds of people here today. The first kind of people got up a couple of hours ago. They're still wiping the cobwebs out of their eyes. And they're singing a little bit like this. I have been loosed. I've been set free. So pardon me a moment. <laughs> but there's another kind of people. There are people that came out of the miry clay. There are people that were hewn out of the rock without hands. And they woke up this morning with a hallelujah in their spirit. They woke up this morning with a song down in their soul. And they came to walk through the gates of Zion with their hands lifted to enter into his gates with thanksgiving 
and they enter into his cross with praise and they came to lift up Jesus and to everybody that came this morning like that I got one thing to tell you well I have been loosed I've been set free pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee I feel the joy nobody like Jesus today there's nobody like Jesus today oh clap your hands all ye people shout unto God with a voice of triumph he said shout unto God with a voice of triumph that's what the psalmist said that's what David said That's what the giant killer said. Does anybody here have a giant you want to see fall? Anybody got some giants you want to see fall? I've got a few giants I'd like to see fall. Giants. In the Old Testament, giants were powerful beings that held regions captive. You couldn't have victory because the giant was there. You couldn't live free because the giant was there. And there will be giants that come into your life and they will shout against you and against your God. But there's got to be a David spirit that comes on somebody that says, I'm done with the giant. This land doesn't belong to Goliath. This land belongs to the Lord. Bible said David wound up his slingshot he let go the stone it struck the giant 
The giant fell. David killed him. Praise God. And then the Bible said that the host of Israel gave a mighty shout. That's what it says. They gave a mighty shout. Woo. Praise God. I came to knock down some giants today. Now the giants you're facing, they're not people. They're not human beings. But they are fear. They are depression. They are addiction. They are family struggles. They are marital dysfunction. They're physical problems. They are cancer. They are, they are cirrhosis. They are the afflictions that come against you. Ah, oh, but if you can lift up your voice like David did in the Old Testament and you can say today God's gonna deliver me today God's gonna set me free today I wish somebody would hear the writer say this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice I will be glad praise God praise God oh give God a hand clap of praise He's so good to us. He is so good to us. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. My, 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 my. You better be careful praising God like that. You keep on praising God like that. That joy of the Lord is going to fall on you. I, I, know, I know we're dignified and I know we like, to, we like to clap our hands and we like to hold it together. But when the fire of the Holy Ghost falls on a person... You're not worried about what somebody else said. You're just worried about what Jesus said. You're just worried about what the king said. Can I get just a couple people to just let the joy of the Lord be your strength? There's people that got reports from the doctor this week. There's people that got negative news this week. Praise him anyway. Love God anyway. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. If I die, let me die speaking in tongues. If today is the day that God takes me, let me die with his praise and his name on my lips. Tell the person next to you, it feels good in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we got to settle down. We got... <laughs> We've got... <laughs> trying I'm trying to move forward but I know it's Sunday morning but I feel all right amen glory to God you can be seated we are so glad you're here. We're glad you came to worship God. If you're visiting with us, welcome to First Pentecostal Church. We're not crazy, we love Jesus. Can you feel that little electricity that runs up? 
your spine, those little doodads that break out on your arm. And That's the same stuff that was in the grave on the third day. That little jolt, that little spark, it just kind of hits you and you go, hmm, I like that. Some people feel it and they get scared. Their eyes get wide. What in the world was that? The Bible calls it the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. And right now, it's inside of us. It's moving upon us. And, and it's stepped down so it doesn't fry you. It's like a transformer. It's, it's when that high voltage lines run over the top of your head. Those, you can hear them humming when you get close to them. That high voltage wire. Well, it hits a transformer. It transforms it down into 110 so you can run your vacuum cleaner and it doesn't blow you sky high. So you can run your air condition and it transforms it into something usable so it doesn't overwhelm you and it doesn't fry you. Oh. The Bible calls that the earnest of our inheritance. I'm, I'm not supposed to be preaching right now, but I just feel like telling somebody this. The Bible calls the Holy Ghost the earnest of our inheritance. It's a little bit of a bigger thing to come. Let me say that again. It's a small example, a small taste of something that is coming later on. It's what the old timers called a foretaste of glory divine. But I heard the prophet say that one day a trumpet's going to sound and the voice of the archangel is going to shout. And when that day comes, God's going to take that big heavenly switch and he's going to override the transformer and that Holy Ghost that's inside of you isn't going to step down anything. It's going to hit you. <laughs> this mortal shall put on immortality. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. Praise God. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, Anybody looking forward to seeing Jesus? Praise God. Praise God. I'm, I'm trying to take, make the announcements and, and greet the visitors. So we, we got we to gotta settle down. Amen. But it's Sunday morning. I'm feeling all right. Amen. 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 It's good to have the family of Imani here today. Derek and Sandra Harris are visiting and Sharon Harris has been here, is here. We're glad y'all are here. Where are y'all at this morning? Right back here. Welcome. We're so glad you came to worship the Lord. We're glad you're here. It's good to have Shakai Killian here from Salt Lake City. Amen. It's good to have you here in the house of the Lord. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Elena and Maddie are here. Sister Donna Yates' granddaughters. Where are they at? Right back here. So God bless you guys. Welcome to First Pentecostal Church. We're glad you came to worship with us. Derek Gardner is here. He came to the car wash yesterday, and he decided to come to church this morning. Derek, welcome. We're glad you came. Woo! Praise God. God's doing good things. And it's good to have Sister Alexi's parents from Shelby, North Carolina. Amen. God bless you all. We're glad to have the Lael family here with us. We love and appreciate them. Buchiri Chibalanza is here. God bless you, Buchiri. We're glad you came to worship the Lord. Where's, where's she at this morning? From Africa. Right back in this section somewhere. God bless you. We're glad you came to worship with us. Stella Pride is here with Sister Stephanie. God bless you, Stella. We're glad that you're here today. Amen. Randy Schaffner is here with Brother Britt, and Iris Vasquez is here this morning. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord with us, Iris. And if you're visiting with us, and, and this is your first time, or you've been a few times, welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the house of God. 
We have a very special guest, guest with us today. Sister Marley is here with us this morning. Bishop Godier's granddaughter, Sister Marley Mitchell, visiting with her grandpa here this week. We're always glad when the Mitchells can come, and we love and appreciate them very much. And just so you have a, an example of, of what's happening this morning, this is a small part of what is happening. Um, while, while this is going on, there's puppets. There's puppets that are preaching to the little ones. They're telling them all about Jesus. There's buses that are running. There are classes. Some of our great young men are, are teaching. Several young men from the community, from, from all over the city, over on Gear Street, there are several hundred uh, Spanish people worshiping and praising God in, in the Spanish language. That's all happening right now. Right now. You're hearing this in English, and it doesn't matter which language it's in. The healing is the same. And the, the name of Jesus is the same. And the power of the Holy Ghost is the same. And it's a great time to be serving God. Thank the Lord. A couple things I want to announce before I move on. After the service this morning, we're going to stand and we're going to have our Abundant Life graduates. Those that have completed the Abundant Life course, we're going to have them come up and receive their certificates. We're going to pray for them. We're going to commission them that God keeps his hand on them. God's raising up a great many people. I'm excited about that. And then tonight we are going to be having our graduation ceremony here at the church where we honor people who have graduated this year. They graduate from high school, they graduate with bachelor's degrees and from different certification programs. We believe in education. We believe in maximizing what God has given to us. And so not only do we want people to repent of their sins and be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, but we want to be the best witness in the kingdom of God here on this earth. And we want to honor those that have sacrificed and worked so hard. So that will be tonight. And to be very frank with you, my, my favorite part of it is I get to wear the floppy hat. Matt does my soul good so be looking forward to that and one more thing I'll mention to you is this summer is an exciting time we are we have so many things happening I'm just gonna take a moment and just mention it to you this week we have camp meeting here in Durham we've got uh, night services on um, Wednesday Thursday and Friday and Brother Dwayne Uzzle is going to be here, and, and Brother Ron Tiller is going to be preaching. And the day services will be held at TDV on Gear Street, and the night services will be held here at Carver Street. Brother Uzzle will be preaching in the day. That's this week. And Brother Tiller will be preaching here at night. And these are great preachers of the gospel. There will be activities for our young people. We're excited about that. And this is going to kick off a summer of revival and harvest. Everybody say revival. Everybody say harvest. Now those are two different things. Revival is people coming back to life. It's kind of like when it hasn't rained for about three weeks and the grass turns brown and then it rains and it, everything turns green. That's revival. Life comes back into what was already there. Harvest is different. It's something that wasn't there. You planted the seed and now something is there. That's harvest. And we are praying and believing God for both of those things. And so next Sunday, July 2nd and July 4th, Brother Taylor Fish is going to be preaching revival services for us. And he is a great evangelist. He'll be preaching. And you don't want to miss that. If somebody needs the Holy Ghost, bring them. If you are here and you need the Holy Ghost, come and believe God. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. The following Sunday, Brother Jacob Phillips will be preaching Sunday morning. That is July the 9th. And then that night, he'll be preaching, and the Mattoon Youth Choir will be here. The great choir from Mattoon, Illinois. If you've never heard them, you need to buckle your seatbelt and get ready. Because the Holy Ghost is going to hit this place like a nuclear warhead. So we're going to have a great time with them. 
And the following week after that, Brother Phillips will be with us again. That'll be July 16th and the 18th. So all of this leading into our peak conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm just telling you, things are happening. Things are happening. We're exciting about it. We're excited about it. And one more thing. I know this is a lot, so just stay with me. We're going to get to the good stuff here in a second. But we're also beginning to do exploratory work on, on clearing portions of our new 40 acres that we bought. And we hope to have a plan in place to begin to clear that. I'm not sure we can do it, but we're praying we can do it, that we can have it cleared in time for this fall where we can have bonfires and games and everything out on our new property. That is our hope. That is our goal. So pray with us and help us. Over the years, many of you that are older, you worked with Bishop Godair as, as you built the new Ed building and then you built this great edifice here. Now your children and grandchildren have a chance to work on the new property together to build the kingdom of God. Their hand will be on the plow. They will be helping and laboring. And it's exciting to see what God's doing. That's all happening this summer. So let's just be anticipating great things from God. Amen. Let's stand together in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I like what I feel in God's house right now. Let's open the word of the Lord to Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63, and I'm going to start reading at verse 7. Isaiah 63, verse 7. Welcome home, Sister Gail. We're glad you're back home. <laughs> Sister Gail got to take a trip, have some vacation, and I hope she didn't answer any calls or have to fool with any paperwork. God bless her, but I'll tell you, we're glad she's back. Isaiah chapter 63, verse seven. If you have it, say amen. amen. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. According to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Early this morning before the sun came up, I felt the Lord ministered of my heart. And I begin to meditate on this portion of scripture and I, I want to draw what I'm going to talk about from this passage. I want to tell you a little bit today about the angel of his presence. The angel of his presence. Tell the person next to you, we need his presence. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. It's good to see Jachin and Jamin this morning. Glad you guys are here with us. They've been in Washington. Good to have them back home. Let's take a minute and let's, let's go to the the events of this last week. I, I was saddened to hear that the submersible craft that was in the ocean going down to view the Titanic, that the souls that were on board that craft, they were all killed. The nation was riveted hoping that there was life, but no one knew or perhaps some knew and didn't say. 
Most didn't know that on the way down, they were killed by the pressure of the atmosphere they were in. It's a tragedy, such a sad thing. My heart went out to them and to their families. And you can only imagine in that split moment, however it played out, how devastating that was. You find out that there was a 19-year-old boy that didn't want to go. But his father, for Father's Day, implored him, and he relented to go spend some time with Dad and to have them both killed. What a heartbreaking dynamic. This is reminiscent of another story. It happened a couple of years ago. Some of you will remember it. There were some boys, I think they were in Sri Lanka, if my memory serves, Thailand, if I, found, if I remember right. But they had been exploring in a cave. They had gone far back underground, not knowing that, that there was a tide that would come in. And that tide, they were, they were far back, I, like a quarter mile into those caves. And they were twisting and turning, and they went up and they went down. It was a labyrinth. It was a maze. A twisting and a turning. They worked their way deep into the underground, not knowing that when the tide came in, the water would rush into those chambers and eventually would completely fill the chambers. They didn't know that, and they were caught. They were trapped. I remember the news cycle as rescue workers worked feverishly to try to save those that were in there. They tried so hard. They sent in machines. They, they, they tried different avenues. Elon Musk even tried to send a little submarine in there. You can remember that. Most of you will remember that. Finally, they sent in highly, highly expert divers that in the most highly trained environment, even their life was at danger. And there with tanks on their backs and, and navigating those tight turns, hairpin turns, those men hazarded their lives and saved those kids. Can you imagine the joy on those young ones' faces when the head of that first diver broke the surface? Because you have to know, you have to know that the oxygen there too was running out. A pocket of air that will be depleted. I can't think of a much worse death than someone in some dark place with no light, no illumination, and it growing more and more labored. Their breathing growing more labored. Their, their lungs struggling to pull in air as it's filled with carbon dioxide. And when that first diver broke the surface, can you imagine the joy that said, I don't have to die, but now I can live because somebody came to save me. Now, you can read that from a very carnal perspective and you can, you can wonder at, at all the dynamics there, but I can't help but feel my Holy Ghost rise up on the inside of me. Because if you think that's bad, then, then maybe you should take a little time and think about what it's going to be like when God saves us here. That joy that we sang about, the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me, the people that run around this church, the people that shout and clap their hands, that's the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. That's the joy of the Lord delivering. That's what it is. It is a delivering. Praise God. Delivered from the darkness. Delivered from the suffocation. Delivered from the mental torment and torture. You've got to put yourself in that position. And I'm going to tell you today, there are people sitting in this room, in this light, in this air-conditioned facility. If you aren't in Jesus Christ, your position is worse than either one of those groups. 
Because to be lost in sin is to be in the worst position that there is. Oh, what a day it was when Jesus came to me. What a joy it was when somebody came into my life and said, you don't have to die. You don't have to stay here. You don't have to be lost. But there's one that came to save, to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the angel of his presence. Because there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. His presence, his being there, his, his glory, to, just to be around him, that power, that glory, that, that life that exudes from his presence. You know, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to, to know all mysteries. And you don't have to have every problem figured out to get victory in your life. All you got to do is get in his presence. Praise God. You may not know how you're going to make it, but if you could just get in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Well, how am I going to make it? I'm not sure. I, 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 as a pastor, sometimes people look at me and assume I have the answers. And I have a lot of answers. I know the scripture. I have a lot of experience. I've pastored a long time. Um, you know, I've pastored for over 20 years now. <laughs> Getting old. And I've seen, I've seen circumstances where people look at me expecting to have answers. And you'd be surprised how many times the answer was just get in his presence. Find that prayer room. Find that hour of prayer. Find that altar. Get into the presence of God. Let his joy come over you. Let his glory come over you. Amen. So... We're a big advocate of the presence of God. And the Bible spoke in the Old Testament about the angel of his presence. I want to take some time and I want to share with you what that means. Because, because it's a miserable thing to be lost without him. I, I have read of stories of famous entertainers. I remember Robin Williams in the last days of his life as, his, as he was being afflicted by a serious brain ailment and he said to himself that he wanted to serious trying to interrupt me here he, he said that he wanted to go out of life on his terms I can't think of a worse thing to, to feel like you have no hope and that your mental cognition is going to decline and that I would rather take my own life so he did he took his own life I can't imagine the lostness, the feeling of being severed from and separated from the presence of God. I'll just be very transparent this morning. I don't know how people make it without God. I, I'm not sure how people make it without the Lord. I, I know some of the ways they try, they, they try to grab a bottle and drink themselves into happiness. They try to lubricate the mechanism in their mind. They try to forget the dynamics of life. They, they, they grab for chemical stimulants and additives and addictive substances. That's why the nicotine industry is still a billion dollar industry because people are trying to cope with the, the place they find themselves in life. But I am here to tell you that there is nothing like the presence of the Lord. It was a good day when you figured out you didn't need that bottle. You didn't need that drug or that stimulant. What you needed was another touch of the master's hand. Hallelujah. When you, when you found out that in his presence you can have the answer, the joy, the peace, the love of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The glory of God that overshadows a person. Can you remember the first day you got the Holy Ghost and something came over you? It had nothing to do with logic. It had nothing to do with, with uh, the, the mechanisms of men, but it had to do with the presence of the Lord. 
Praise God. So, Brother Urshan, what do I do? I'm, I'm down. I'm discouraged. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Find his presence. If you'll take that time to pray. Mm. If, you'll, if you'll take your clock at 7 in the morning or, or 1 in the afternoon, whenever you can find it, and set that clock and say, I'm not leaving this place for one hour. And in that hour, I'm going to get in his presence. Well, I, I, I lose things to say. I, only, I run out of things to say. It's not about what you say. It's about getting into his presence. If you can't say anything new, just say, thank you, Jesus. Just say, hallelujah. I've seen people receive the Holy Ghost just saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's not about your vocabulary. And it's not about finding something new to say. It's about his presence. It's about transitioning out of your logical mind into the Holy Ghost and getting into the Spirit. The Bible said the angel of his presence kept them. God, as he looked down upon men from heaven, he saw that men did not seek him. For those of you that don't know this, you were made to be connected to God. That loneliness you feel, philosophers call it the existential loneliness. It's that numbing, lonely feeling. It's, it's why you don't like to be alone. It's, like, it's why, why you feel that devastating emptiness. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you find the answer. You want to know one reason to get the Holy Ghost? It's because it's what you've been looking for your whole life. Whew. It's what you've been searching for. You thought it was your mother and father, but those were, just, those were just substitutes that were holding you together until you found the answer. There's a father that's higher than any earthly father, and there's a mother that's higher than any earthly mother, and you find it in the presence of God. I was talking to a young lady one day and, and I walked into the hospital room where she was at and she was so discouraged. I could see it on her face. And when I walked in the room, her whole countenance lightened up. And she said, Pastor Urshan, thank you so much for coming. It really touched my heart. And she said, everything's going to be better now because you're here. And I didn't have the heart to break it to her. Me being here, I love you, and I'm here, and we're going to pray together. But it's not my presence that changes things. But I've been in a prayer room, and I've been talking with the Lord, and there's one greater than me here today. And I looked at her. I said, the love that you think comes from me is the love of God. You're really feeling his presence that is reflected in me. Mm. How does that work, somebody said? How does that work? Let me tell you how the glory of God works. It's the Bible describes it like the sun. And there is a lesser light called the moon. That's what it's like with God and you and God and me. There is no light that I have. The moon has no light. The light the moon has comes from the sun. There is no light in me. There is no love in me. There is no goodness in me. But there is a greater light that rules over everything and it shines off of me. And that is how you see in the nighttime. Praise God. That glory, that's not my glory, that's God's glory. That joy, that's not my joy, that's his joy. That love that you think is coming from me, you think it's coming from me. You think it's coming from Bishop Godair. You think it's coming from these ministers. You think it's coming from those godly influences. You can look up and say, look, I can see the light's coming from the moon. Look, the moon is so bright. No, the moon is completely dark. But there's a light shining on that moon that's reflecting back to you. And that's the glory of God. Woo! So 
Don't get it twisted. It's not my presence you're really looking for. You're looking for his presence. This is a mild reflection of a greater thing. There is a presence of God. There is a power of God. There is a joy of God. And it will keep you. Praise God. That's his presence. That's his presence. And he longs to give you that fullness of his presence. But knowing that men weren't ready, knowing that they weren't able, God would send his angel, his emissary. And that, that angelic creature would come. I'm saying this in the context of the Abundant Life class being honored today. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Because God sends forth people. God sends forth angels. And he represents himself in them. Represent literally means to represence yourself. It's like when a police officer comes to you and you've been perhaps driving a generous speed. You are on your way. You are late. The dog tore something up. Wouldn't come in when you called him. Etc. Etc. And you speed a bit. Just a bit. You round the corner and there they sit. Waiting on you and waiting to enrich the city of Durham. They pull you over. When they pull you over, that is not just any man. That is the re-presencing of the city of Durham. The city of Durham, when they put that uniform on, they come in the power and the authority of that city. And what they say and what they do carries the weight of the greater authority that's behind them. And it is the messenger of the city. That is what that angel did. He represented the presence of God. I don't know how to describe that to you any better than that. I was talking to um, Brother Wade Bass. He preached here uh, last year. And, and, and sometimes in the work of God, you'll find yourself without a, a, a good answer for things. And one of the, one of the challenges he ran into was, was there was a, a, a people that were in a very remote village in a very violent area that it was impossible to humanly reach. It, it, first of all, it was illegal to fly into that region. The United States wouldn't allow you. If you did fly in, you had to get past Islamic extremists. And, and if you go in there as an American, good luck getting back out. And your State Department would not help you if you were held ransom and, and you could die. But there were people in there that wanted the Holy Ghost. Somebody got in there with a gospel and they found the bass on the internet and they contacted him and said, will you baptize these people in Jesus' name? No way to get there. And so the bass prayed, God, how can I do this? These people need you and, and they have no hope without you. And the Bible says that when you baptize someone, it is to be done calling on the name of the Lord. So what Brother Bass did... And I'm not saying this is the thing to do, but I'm telling you I'd much rather have this than have nothing. When he told them, go down to the river, they went down to the river. He said, get in the water with them. They got in the water with them. They said, hold the iPhone over them. <laughs> and there's Brother Bass's face on the iPhone. And from another country... He said, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. And they took him down and they came back up and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. Now you can poke at that and you can say that's not a good thing, but I'm telling you, if God will fill them with the Holy Ghost, I'll call the name of Jesus over them. 
The circumstances may not be perfect, but I want people to stand before him with that name. To walk with God and to let his spirit come into the inside of them. Amen. And it's an imperfect illustration. It's not a perfect analogy. But in a sense, he represented himself to that place. Though he is over here, yet now over here through digital means he spoke the name of Jesus over them. If you can grasp that, you can understand the angel of his presence. Except he doesn't use Apple and he doesn't use Google. God sent a messenger from his presence and said, go and lead my people. Doesn't it feel good to know that God knows where you're at? That God cares enough? That God sitting on his throne looks down and said, they're going to need my help. This is going to be a little difficult for them. This is going to be awful hard for them. So Gabriel, I need you to go down there and help them. Just, the angel can't do the work itself. The angel can't do the saving, but it can be the presence of the Lord at that time. It was a tough thing. Can you imagine as Mary looked at Joseph and said, Joseph, um, I'm pregnant. And, uh, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was God. God has compassion on us. He knew Joseph's frame of mind. He knew the incredulity that would fill that man's heart. The, the shock. And he, the Bible says he was minded to put her away privately. This man couldn't make the leap. He couldn't, he couldn't grasp that a child could be born. It didn't matter that the prophet said a virgin shall conceive and bring forth his son. It didn't matter that, that, the, that this was foretold many years ago. The man could not make the leap. So in that moment, God sent an angel down to that man and said, Joseph, I know it's hard, but, but God has chosen Mary, and that which is in her is of the Holy Ghost. And the words came out, fear not. Fear, I came to tell somebody this morning, fear not. I know you're going through a circumstance, but fear not. I know you're dealing with something that's about to overwhelm you, but fear not. If you can just get into his presence, if you can just believe his word, listen to the words of Isaiah Joseph, take unto yourself Mary, because this is of God. And the angel of his presence showed up. Praise God. This happened all through the Bible. Genesis chapter 48. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 48. The Bible said that Joseph brought his two little boys, Jacob, who is now called Israel. He is laying there dying. He's labored in his breathing. He has a short amount of time. And Joseph... The prime minister of Egypt walks in with Ephraim and Manasseh to see the old patriarch. I, I want you to put your hands on them, Dad. I want you to put your blessing on them. The same God that showed up to you and showed you that ladder and stood at the top of it, the same God that you wrestled with that broke you and called you Israel, I want that same thing to get on my sons. Praise God. I'm going to tell you right now, when I think of the great ministries that have stood in this pulpit, and I think of Brother Godair, and I think of, of Sister Godair, I want the same things that formed that, this church and, and the ministries that came forth that helped build Pentecost. I want it to be in my generation. I want it to get on my sons. I want it to get on you. I want it to splash over on somebody else. Praise God. I want His presence. Amen. Genesis 48 and 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. And I love this right here. Let my name be named on them. Woo. I like that. 
And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Let the angel which kept me, let that, that re-presencing of God, that God would send an agent, God would send a being into my life. When I was running from Esau, God sent an angel. When I, when I was running in the night across the Jabbok River, and there met a man with me, and I wrestled with him till the breaking of the day, that angel that blessed me, I want him to be on Ephraim and Manasseh. I want that angel that showed up to Abraham on the plains of Mamre that stood with the Lord and, and warned Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah and the delivering of Lot from that wicked city. I want that angel that met with Isaac in a dream and told him what was to come. I want that angel, that re-presencing of God. I want him to be on the next generation. God help us to hang on to the promises of God so you can pass that legacy to your children. I want my children to feel the same Holy Ghost I felt in the 1970s and the 1980s. I want the same presence of God that built this sanctuary and built the sanctuary of my grandfather and father. I want that same presence to be here in five years, in ten years. I want the preaching to be just as powerful. I want the worship to be just as strong. I want the glory to fill the house just like it did in those days. Let it never be quiet in the house of God. Let there be a praise that rings forth as the presence of the Lord fills the sanctuary. This angel's all over the Bible. Exodus chapter 3. You know, you can get so busy reading about, about Moses that you forget the angel. Chapter 3, verse 1, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the backside of the desert. You ever hear that phrase, backside of the desert? I come from the backside of the desert. That's where it comes from. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Praise God. I, I want to tell you one of the greatest witnesses that you'll have in your life is that God speaks out of your life in the middle of all your chaos. God will speak out of, out of the burning bush of your life. And people will want to talk to you. They will want to turn aside and see this great sight that though this bush burns, it is not consumed. People want to know how you are making it. People want to know why you're not falling apart. People want to know why you're not blackening and turning to ash. As you go through the trial, as you go through the difficulty, when you keep on walking and you keep on praising and you keep on glorifying God, there's an angel that speaks to people. Mm. They're going to watch you as you go through your family problems and you keep on singing. They're going to watch you as you go through your financial impossibilities and you keep on praising. They're going to watch you as you get a bad report from the doctor and they're waiting on you to fall apart. But even as you burn, you're not consumed. Even as, as you're on fire, even as you're dealing with your circumstance. All right, any minute they're going to fall apart. Any minute they're going to give up. Any minute they're going to curse God. But you keep on and the bush is not consumed. There's a Holy Ghost fire that will get a hold of you and people will say, I will turn aside and I will see this great sight. <laughs> Praise God. Whew. I got news for everybody that is waiting on Pastor Urshan to fall apart. Keep on waiting and don't hold your breath. I got news for every enemy and every adversary and every critic and every skeptic and every devil that you're waiting on my branches to darken and fall off. Keep on waiting. 
go ahead and get yourself some popcorn and pull up a chair because in five years I'm still gonna be green in five years my branches will still be there the Lord is in this his presence sustains me and he makes a table for me in the presence of mine enemies Keep on dancing. Keep on shouting. Keep on glorifying God. The fire can't hurt you when you're in his presence. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found out. Moses figured it out with the burning bush and the three Hebrew children said, I'll never give up on one God. I'll never praise another God. Throw me in the fire. And when you throw me in the fire, there's a fourth man. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Bible said the fire did not hurt them. Now, this is not part of my message, but I'm just going to throw this in there. Don't be afraid of the fire. If you're in his presence, don't be afraid of the fire. Now, the fire can kill you, and sometimes it does. I'm not telling you God's going to deliver you out of everything. You, you've got to get that three Hebrew children mindset. That the Lord is able to deliver. But if he does not, we still will never bow to your idol. One day, God's going to call me home. One day, my time's going to be up. But until that day comes, I'm going to praise him and shout and glorify and testify. I'm going to bear witness. That's what angels do. They bear witness of his glory. So, let me tell you, when you're in the fire, the fire becomes your friend. The Bible said that when they threw them in the fire, it was to kill them. It did not kill them. God kept them. But it burned the ropes off of them. A lot of times, God throws you in the fire to break your addiction. That addiction that held you. That that addiction that you could not break in good times. You couldn't break it when you were healthy. You couldn't break it when you had money. You couldn't break it when everything was going right. God will throw you in the fire. And in the fire, it will burn off everything that is not God. Hallelujah. You ask God to deliver you. But sometimes he delivers you by throwing you in the fire. When he throws you in the fire, the ropes break off. And that's where you learn to shout and dance and praise and lift him. I'm preaching to somebody right now. If you're in the fire, just believe God. Trust God. Have faith in God. There's a fourth man that will come up alongside of you. There's a presence of God that will walk with you. My, 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 my. I don't have a God that's on the outside of outer space somewhere. I've got a God that comes right down in the middle of my circumstances. He said, I'll walk with you. I'll go beside you. I will be your strength. And I will be your great reward. Can I, take it? Can I take it one step further? Just one step further. The Bible says that when they came out, their hair wasn't singed. Watch this. The Bible said that there was no smell of smoke on them. When all this is over, I'm not going to sit there and talk about it for the next 10 and 20 years. I'm not going to sit there and wallow in the problem. I'm not going to talk about how bad they were. I'm not going to talk about how much they gossiped. I'm not going to talk about how bad they stabbed me in the back. Uh -uh. No, no. The smell of smoke is not on me. The when they came walking out, you didn't even know they'd been in a fire. 
you're going to come out of this thing. Nobody's going to know what happened because the joy of the Lord, the peace of God, the grace of God will keep you. Praise God. Praise God. His presence. Well, Brother Urshan, don't you know what they're saying? That's not the first time somebody said something. It's not going to be the last time somebody said something. Well, don't you got to go straighten them all out? I spend a lot of time, Brother Newton, trying to straighten everybody out then. I heard somebody said something about me. I heard you said something about me. I heard you said, you, 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 you. And I'd be pointing fingers at everybody. And finally, I'd just throw my hands up, say, I'm not going back to church because everybody hates me. And that's what the devil wants you to do. Oh, but there's no smoke on me when I leave this fire. This is a bush that burns. But it's not consumed. Hallelujah. You know what? His glory is brighter than the problem. Let me say that again. His glory is brighter than the problem. I don't have time to look at the treachery. I don't have time to look at, at the short-sightedness. I don't have time to look at the ignorance. I'm too busy looking at him. I'm too busy loving him. I can't wait to see the next thing he's going to open up. I can't wait to see the next church that God's going to start. I can't wait to see the next person that's going to be baptized. I can't wait to see the next miracle. I don't have time to talk about the naysayer. I, I, can, hear, I can hear the apostles say that the trials of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed not worthy and when somebody sees your bush burning they say I will turn aside Whew. I've seen a lot of people fall apart but I've never seen people shout in the fire I've never seen branches stay green in the fire what kind of fire is this? Whew. What kind of fire is this? If you can just get in his presence. I heard one preacher say it like this, and y'all got to forgive me. I just get excited when I, when I talk about it. Your Holy Ghost fire needs to get hotter than your hell fire. <laughs> your Holy Ghost fire needs to be hotter than hellfire. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar looked at him and said, if you don't bow down, I'll heat it up seven times hotter. And the boys looked back at him and said, you can heat it up eight times, 10 times, 20 times. Doesn't matter how hot it gets. There's a Holy Ghost fire that is hotter than anything you've got. I've got a fire that burns hotter than any addiction. I've got a, hot, a fire that burns hotter than any circumstance. I've got a fire that... I can remember the scripture that said, my God is a consuming fire. I'm trying to tell you about the angel of the Lord and his presence. I got to hurry. I'm, I'm running out of time. That angel that spoke out of that burning bush, we see it again in Exodus 23. Exodus 23, verse 20. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Whew. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Watch this. For my name is in him. Praise God. Praise God. I believe that God sends angels before us. 
I don't have the time to go to every verse that deals with this, but I'm here to tell you God sends angels before you. When you pray and ask God to help you and you are in the will of God, he will send angels in front of you. If you, if you keep on reading, it talks about what that angel would do. Verse 23, for mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. There's an angel that will go in front of you. I can't tell you the amount. I, when, I, when I landed in Roatan, Honduras, I was inheriting a very challenging circumstance. And I, I said as the plane landed, God, send your angel in front of me. I can't speak this language. I don't know anybody in this area, but send your angel in front of me. If God goes with me, there is no devil that can stand before me. If I'm God's man... If I'm God's man, there is no giant, there is no devil, there is no principality, no power that can stand in front of me. If you are God's man, if you are God's woman, you can take them down with a slingshot and five smooth stones. You can take them down with the jawbone of a donkey. You can take them down with a trumpet, a pitcher, and a candle. If I'm God's man, I can come into town on a unicycle and a kazoo and still have revival because his presence is with me I can show up with a unicycle and a flutophone oh you think I'm kidding well, I'll take you back to the old place we were, that little pitiful building. I, you, if you've ever heard me play the piano, I plunked around on that piano. I messed up more songs than you could imagine. I have made a fool out of myself a thousand times. And after about 500 times, well, the ridge just stops feeling bad. <laughs> you just say, I, I am become a fool for Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> His glory is what matters. I know that in my worst circumstance, he'll make up the difference. And with my little gifts, somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost. I had people tell me, you don't have a music director. You don't have a choir. You can't do anything that you're doing. But service after service, people were getting baptized. And people were getting the Holy Ghost plunking on that piano and croaking my little songs. There's a God that goes before me. And he works on my behalf. And he heals and he delivers. And he sets free. The angel of his presence. God will send I'm closing. I'm closing. I don't have time. I don't have time to go to every place, but if you take the time to go to Exodus 33, God adds an element to it. He says, the angel went before you. The angel will go before you. And then in Exodus 33, he said, my presence shall go before you. It's all over your Bible. Joshua 5, Joshua is afraid. He, he's worried about what's going to happen. And, 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 and he doesn't know if he's fit to lead the people. And, and he's, he's, he's got his, his worries and his concerns. And the Bible says a man met him. And he said, who are you? He said, I'm the captain of the Lord's host. And his presence is with you. Praise God. This is why David would go to the priest and say, Lord, should we go up? And the Lord would say, go up. And he'd go back again, Lord, should we go up? And the Lord would say, go up. David was doing that because he didn't want to go up without the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Finally, he came up. He said, Lord, should we go up? The Lord said, you will not go up, but you will go around by the mulberry trees. <laughs> Down by the mulberry trees. Yes, by the mulberry trees. And when thou hearest the sound of, I like this word, a going. The sound of a going among the mulberry trees. I used to think that was just the branches kind of kind of waving back and forth and the whistle of the air through the branches, but that's not what the Hebrew language describes it as. If you read it in Hebrew, it literally gives the idea of marching feet through the tops of the trees. 
Whew, there's an angelic host that's already there. There's an invisible army that's already there. And I don't want to be out on the edge of somewhere fighting my own battle. I don't want to be fussing with somebody. I don't want to be fighting the wrong enemy. I don't want to be fighting my brother or fighting somebody that heaven's not fighting. But I want to hear the sound of a going. I want to know the angels are walking that way. I want to know the presence of God is going that way. I want to know he's with me. Praise God. <laughs> with that idea, I want you to read Psalms 34 with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. You've heard these before. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. I watched some people here today praising God and all I can describe it as is their faces are not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Here it is. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Woo. It all has to do with his presence. It's all about his presence. Let's stand. Let's stand in the presence of God. Let's lift our hands in this place. Yeah, I feel his presence right now. Ah. God sent the angel of his presence. He said, my name will be in him. And then he said, my presence shall go with thee. My name will be in him. There's a lot of theology. I'm, I'm out of time. I know I've gone for a while here. But eventually he said, I'm not leaving it up to an angel anymore. But a virgin will conceive and she's going to bear a son. And his name will be Emmanuel. Not an angel, not a representative, but God himself will be with us. God came to bring his presence to me. I couldn't get to his presence on my own. I couldn't get there by myself. There's no way to reach him. Islam says you can, you can say enough prayers and you can wash your body enough times and you'll get there. And Buddhism says that if you can get to a certain enlightenment, eventually you'll get to nirvana. And all of those are false. Jesus knew that there was no way for a man to get to him, so he came to me. And that great God, what did it feel like? When those scuba divers' head broke the surface and those boys realized he came for me. He came for me. I thought I was going to die, but he came for me. I was dead, but he came for me. If you can understand it there, you can understand it here. 
that God himself, when he came into this world, you were dying. I was dying. I had no hope. The Bible said aliens from the commonwealth of Israel without hope, without God in the world. Jesus came. When he came, God added, added a dimension to his presence. Now, when he came, he felt everything you feel. The Bible said that when he came to Lazarus and, and he heard them crying and he felt the pains, the Bible said he had compassion on them. And one little verse, John eleven thirty five, 35, just this little verse carries such dynamite inside of it. It says, Jesus wept. The presence of God came alongside of them and he he felt the pain of Lazarus' death. He felt the pain of Mary and Martha. He didn't leave you alone, but he came down into the fire with you. I'm preaching to people right now. You feel so alone. You feel so devastated. There's a God in heaven that will come right up alongside of you. And he felt everything you're feeling. He endured everything that you're enduring. Praise God. Sometimes I've got to stand with people in front of a coffin, in front of a, of, a, of a casket here at the front. And I know their heart is broken, but I can hear the psalmist say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's not with you in an abstract sense. He died. He rose from the dead. He is with you in a way that is deeper than some emotional thing. I'm closing. I could say a lot. I'm out of time. But the Bible says in John chapter 17, even as the Father hath sent me, he sent him into this world. John 17, John 20. As he hath sent me, so send I you. The same spirit that was in Jesus is going to be in you. It's going to be in you. The same healing that he brought is now in you. The same joy that he brought is now in you. I want, I want the Abundant Life class. I want you to come. If you are in the Abundant Life class, I want you to come and make your way. Come down to the front. I want you to line up right here. That's it. Just stretch right along here. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my spirit inside of people. I'm going to send them into the world. The same Holy Ghost that was in the man Christ Jesus, the same angel of his presence. Let me tell you what that word angel means. It means messenger. You think that they have wings. You think that they flap around. Some of you might think they're little chubby babies. But the Bible calls it messenger. The word evangelize has the word ev, angel, eyes in the middle of it it's one who bears a message the bible in revelation chapter one calls pastors angels the angels of the church i'm going to tell you that back in the early 1970s there was an angel that came to durham north carolina and his name was brother johnny Godare. and when his feet hit this ground my bible says my bible says how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet that bring the gospel and glad tidings of great things when his feet touched Durham an angel started walking the ground it was a good day when that man knocked on your door it was a good day when he commissioned bus drivers and captains and workers and the same spirit that was in Jesus, the same spirit that was in Bishop, the same spirit that was in the elders is the same spirit that's in us today. It's the angel of his presence. And 
I walk in his authority. I walk in his power. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I said I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I know that Jesus himself doesn't come in a bodily form, but he sends angels. John 20, 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. You're going forth as the angel of the presence of God. When you walk into the grocery store, you're not just anybody. The angel of his presence goes with you. When you go to get your oil changed, you're not just anybody. But you have the power to heal those that are around you. I want this church, I want you to stretch your hands toward these precious ones right now. I want you to stretch your hands towards these precious people of God. I want you to pray over them. I want you to speak the name of Jesus over them. God, I want you to fill them with your spirit. I want your anointing to rest upon them. I want your power and your favor to touch them, God. Put your blessing upon their lives. Put your blessing upon their heart. I speak your name over their hearts and over their lives. I commission them, God, for your glory and for your power. Go before them, God. Anoint them in the name of Jesus. Fill them with your spirit. Encourage them, God. Let them be a vessel. Let them be a vessel used of God for your glory. Keep them, God. Sustain them, God. In the trial, in the adversity, watch over them. Hallelujah. Send your angel before them. Put the presence of God inside of their hearts, inside of their minds and their spirits. Let them walk upright before you. By the grace of God, we love you, Jesus. We plead your blood over their hearts and over their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the angel of your presence walk the streets of Durham, North Carolina. Let it go before them. Let it help them, God. Let it strengthen them. Minister to those that are in their lives, to their families, to their children. Help them, Jesus. I speak your name over their lives and over their hearts. Heal their bodies, God. Let them walk in the authority and the anointing that you've called them to walk in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's love God in this place. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. I want somebody to step down and help us pray. Let's come together as a church body. Let's pray for these right now. Let's have some brothers come down and pray for these men. Some sisters come and pray for these women. The Holy Ghost is here. The presence of the Lord is here in this place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let's speak his name in this house. Oh, let's speak his name. My name will be in them. My hand will be upon them. My presence will go before them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In your presence, there is freedom. Chains are loose and lights are healed. Peace is waiting. 
Hallelujah. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, let's love, love him today. Let's lift our voices. The presence of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. God's raising up teachers. God's raising up workers. God's raising up saints. God's raising up people that love God, who are committed to the things of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, His presence. When you walk into the hospital room, His presence goes with you. When you walk to your family, your, His presence goes with you. When you walk into the turmoil, the peace of God goes with you. In the name of Jesus. Chains are loose. Chains are loose. And lives are healed. Lives are healed. Your peace is waiting. We walk just so bad. In your presence, your love's revealed. In your presence, in your presence, in your presence. What a beautiful presence of God is here right now. What a beautiful presence of God is in this place right now. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I feel his presence right now. <laughs> I feel his presence right now. God feels so strongly about his presence. That he told his disciples, when you have done a cup of cold water, visited somebody in jail, if you, when we get to heaven, he is going to say to them, thank you. Thank you for coming and visiting me. When I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And when I was lost, you came and helped me. And they said, Lord, when did we do these things? He said, when you have done it to the least of these, you did it to me. It's about his presence. When Saul, the persecutor of the church, when he fought against the church, when, when Jesus knocked him to the ground, the bright light shone. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Me. That's his presence. 
And when you walk up to somebody to pray for them, and when you bring somebody joy, and when you help somebody, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I know, I know you're you, and I know you have problems, and I know you have, and you might feel unworthy. But when you put on that Holy Ghost uniform, you are coming in the name of him that sent you. And the presence of God goes throughout this city. Brother Eshton, we're going to pass out these certificates. Brother Brandon Ashley. Morgan Beckwith. Darlene Brannon. Laneda Zaneda Garcia, that's right. Imani Harris. Stephen Jernigan. Del Rose King. Brother Owen Lindsay. Boris Rodriguez. Nadine Rodriguez. Patricia Martin. Zach Parker. And R.J. Witt. Let's give these people a, a great hand of appreciation. They've done a great job. They have studied. They have memorized. They have taken the apostolic doctrine deep into their hearts. And God's going to use them for his glory. Amen. 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 I'm excited about this great class of Abundant Life graduates. We love you. We appreciate you. And we're here to help you. Amen. Amen. We'll take a few moments. You can take pictures with family. You can come and greet them. Let them know that you love them. Service is tonight at 6 o'clock. Let's come ready to pray. Let's come ready to have a great move of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.